Hi, welcome to the state of Julia Geo. This is a presentation by me, Marte Pronk, uh, and Rafael Schouten, and Josh Day. And Julia Geo is a GitHub organization that tries to index all the geospatial packages for Julia. And our aim is to basically make sure that there is inter uh, interoperability between these packages. So make it easy to store, load, but also uh, operate on any custom geometries that are around based on the packages. So there's a website which you can check for this list. And we've done two previous presentations. One at Phosphor-G, just about introduction for Julia uh, and how it would work for geospatial data. And important for this presentation is that Martijn Visser back in 2020 presented a new geo interface redesign. And geo interface is really meant to have a single interface for geometries. So any custom geometry by a custom packages defines some methods so that anyone can easily access that custom geometry. And this was in 2020. So finally this year, this spring, we saw a new geo interface, the 1.0 release. So it has been three years in the making. And where the previous uh, geo interface worked with super types, which limited the total scope of the ecosystem because other packages sometimes make use of abstract vector subtyping or abstract array subtyping. The new Geo interface has been designed with traits. So we can actually implement it everywhere. Uh, and it's all inspiration from the tables.geo interface. So I will go through the interface later in a demo. Uh, but this new Geo interface is 1.0, it's a breaking release. And it's all a whole cascade of updates through the ecosystem. So on the left hand side, you have all the existing packages that saw updates based on this work. So these packages saw an update, but they saw also quality of life improvements. So better documentation if there was none, um, but also new features. So Shapefell got projection support, Rasters got rotated array support, uh, GeoJSON got a table support, well, uh, ArchGDO got support for the new uh, Mac books. It got support for prepared geometries and it's some more exotic types like small integers uh, for the vector um, operations. Apart from the existing packages, we also have new packages. We have extends, which defines a bounding box type that we can use in the ecosystem. And there's GeoParquet and KML, which are geospatial formats that you can now natively load and also write in uh, Julia. There's a leaflet used for uh, its web mapping, so it's visualization based on any geo interface uh, geometry. And you can now convert and read uh, well-known text and well-known binary based on any geo interface supported geometry. And all this work, this is a flurry of activity has been sponsored by Julia Computing. Uh, and without them, this probably wouldn't have happened for another few years because just the geo interface PR was open for three years before. Uh, so major kudos to them. So a small demo for geo interface. I have a Jupyter notebook here uh, and let's, we download the shape file and the shape file is natural earth. So these are the borders of the countries in the world. And we can, uh, let's take a single geometry from that shape file. And this is a polygon with apparently 301 points. So the geo interface, if that's supported, you can check that. So is geometry on that geometry that we got from the shape file, and we get indeed true back. That means that we can request other things, such as the geometry trade. And here we see it's a multi polygon actually, which I didn't expect from just the type. Uh, then we can request the number of geometries, which is four. So there are four geometries for polygons in this multi polygon. And we also can get the first polygon. And these are very generic names and they also alias the actual methods behind. So that's n polygon would also work. And n line string would work for a, a polygon itself, but n geometry on a line string would get you the number of points. So this is a recursive way uh, of getting all the coordinates. 
You can also request the dimensionality, so the number of coordinates in the geometry, that's two, so it means there's an X and a Y coordinate. And there is a method for the coordinate reference system. Now, the power of GeoInterface is, is when other packages actually use GeoInterface uh, supported geometries. So, new package well-known geometry, I talked about it before, we can now get the well-known text representation of the shape felt geometry. And note that well-known geometry doesn't know about shape fell. So this geometry is still the shape fell polygon. Well-known geometry doesn't know about this, but it does implement geo interface, so it can actually retrieve that it's a multi-polygon and it can retrieve all coordinates in the correct order. And the same goes for well-known binary, and we can also do the inverse. We need to annotate that this string that we got before, this string is actually a well-known text representation using geo format types. Same goes for the well-known binary. And then we can actually, again, request the number of geometries on that uh, well-known binary and well-known text. And we see that it still works. Uh, and we can also request based on the number of geometries and get geometries, and this recursively, there's now the backwards compatible coordinates method. And then you can actually get the nested coordinates back. We can also do conversion to other packages. So let's use ArchGDAL, which wraps GDAL in a Julian way. And we, here we convert this. Still, this is a shapefile, and ArchGDAL doesn't know about shapefile geometries, but it does support GeoInterface. So we can actually convert, uh, again, this polygon into uh, ArchGDAL1. And here we see that ArchGDAL actually does display that it's a multi-polygon directly. Uh, and again, if you request the one of the geo interface methods on this, this still works. So it still knows it has four polygons in this multi polygon. And well, this is already a very quick overview of the power of geo interface when it's implemented in multiple packages, uh, but you can go even further. So this is all a single geometry, but now let's rasterize uh, the whole shape file. So we'll be using rasters, which has a new feature to natively rasterize um, well, geospatial um, geometries that implement the geo interface. And we can request the extend. So then we can get an extend back, a bounding box in essence, the coordinate reference system, and then we can set up a raster in which we rasterize all these polygons. And here I take a resolution of 0 0.1 degrees. Um, and note, this is all based on the table. So if we go back up, all the way back up, that's actually the whole shape file. And again, rasters also doesn't know about the shape file, where about the shape file table or actually a single shape file geometry. But these all implement geo interface, which means that rasters can just rasterize this because it knows this is actually, it has a vector of geometries. And you see that's also because this is native Julia, this rasterization is really va fast. Um, it's not that helpful an area like this, but we can actually plot it. And then we'll see all the borders of the world. Um, I think this is an excellent example of how Geo Interface can enable easy support for any geometry uh, that lives within Julia. So back to the presentation itself. The only thing left is a bit about the future plans. Basically, we plan more PRs, maybe to meshes.gl, polygon ops, uh, maybe spatial indices. And then the other thing is mainly geospatial table support. So we want to get spatial indexing working easily and out of the box. Uh, so any subsetting or filtering or other operations on a geospatial table uh, work way faster. And in the future, we also like support for geospatial operations in distributed tables. So not just a union of some geometries, but it will be a union of unions is what you would get. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them at JuliaCon. Otherwise you can of course make issues, PRs on any of the uh, mentioned packages before. And I'd say otherwise see you at JuliaCon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.